Inside is now traveling at a velocity of 2,000 meters per second. Inside has passed through peak deceleration. Telemetry shows the spacecraft saw about 8 G. Inside should now be experiencing the peak heating rate. Ground stations are observing signals consistent with parachute deploy. Marco Alpha, Marco Bravo, maintain lock status. Altitude convergence, the radar has locked on the ground. Yes. Standing by for lander separation. Lander separation commanded. Altitude 600 meters. Altitude 400 meters. 200 meters. 80 meters, 60 meters, 30 meters, 20 meters, 17 meters, standing by for touchdown. Touchdown confirmed. <laughs> Ready for a trip to Mars? You just saw how we all felt at NASA on November 26 last year, when the InSight rover landed on the surface of Mars as part of the NASA's Mars exploration program. While I'm talking, InSight is studying the interior of Mars and recording environmental data when it's not taking selfies like this one. But InSight has not been the only visitor of the Red Planet. Our history of exploring Mars actually goes back to over 50 years ago. The first images that we got from the surface of Mars were pretty unclear. But it rapidly improved. And today, robots are screening and studying the entire planet. During the last decade, NASA's Mars Exploration Program led to a significant discovery. The building blocks for life, water and salt in nutrients, were found by NASA's Phoenix Lander. At first, water was found in the form of huge ice blocks, like in the Martian Coral Lake Crater. But in 2015, even liquid water was discovered on the surface of Mars. And these discoveries are definitely the first of a long, exciting series. No later than next year, Mars 2020 rover will be sent to seek for life on Mars. It will also collect rock and soil samples and put them aside to potentially bring them back on Earth during a future mission. So exploring Mars, um, is really something that is completely, uh, that has a lot of um, future um, like excitement for humanity. We, we may laugh today at the first pictures of Mars taken 55 years ago, but it's very likely that our kids in 2060 will make fun of us when they realize that our travel options were limited to one single planet. But to reach these perspectives, why are we starting with Mars? Why are we trying so hard to take the first step on this rocky, arid, cold, and apparently lifeless planet, while it's so much easier to travel to the moon? It's because Mars is more Earth-like than any other planet. Four billion years ago, Mars is believed to have been much more like Earth than today. Based on geological observations, we have reasons to believe that at this time, Mars was covered in lakes and oceans and had a thick atmosphere just like Earth. Unfortunately, it burned away over the millennia because Mars does not have a global magnetic field or a strong enough gravity to attract and retain atmospheric components. But Mars, is not a dead planet. Its climate is still actively changing, and it's slowly emerging from a nice age that started 400,000 years ago. Compared to the moon, 
Mars has far more vital resources in terms of human body adaptations for water, temperature, sunlight, gravity, atmosphere, day-night rhythm. Just to give an example, one moon day is equivalent to a month on Earth, while a Martian day is just a few minutes longer than 24 hours. Then we could also think of Venus, that is 30% closer to us than the red planet. But Venus is literally like hell, with its acid rains, nights that last for 120 days, and average temperatures over 400 degrees. So compared to Venus, Mars is a real paradise. And Mars does not only bring new promises for the future, it also has the power to tell us about our past. Earth, Mars, and Venus formed over 4.5 billion years ago from similar elements and minerals. Their transformation over time has then been different, but the deep interior of Mars can still possibly help us understand our own origin. And Mars is actually the best lab to understand what happened to Earth for two main reasons. First, there is nobody there burning fossil fuels and pumping global warming pollutants into the Martian atmosphere. So the climate on Mars is perfectly preserved. Secondly, Mars has kept evidence of the earliest days of the solar system because its geology has very little activity. So the rocks from billion years ago are just sitting on the Martian surface while on Earth it has been largely erased by plate tectonics. So exploring Mars actually does not only mean exploring Mars, it means understanding our own planet and exploring the entire solar system. But even without considering all these potential outcomes, there is no other way but to say that the Martian land is just beautiful, with all its fantastic mountains, canyons, volcanoes. Mars has a natural beauty that does not only amaze crazy scientists, but also makes us think, I wish my next trip could be to Mars. Well, to make that happen, there are still a few technical challenges that need to be solved. The first one is to figure out how humans can face the extreme conditions during the travel to get to Mars. Going to the moon took three days. Mars is a completely different story. Today, it takes at least six months just to get there, which means an exciting one-year journey dealing with uh, low gravity, cosmic radiation, and meteorites. And this is not even talking about the dramatic psychological impact that such a long time of confinement and isolation must have on the human brain. And once you get there, the, the nightmare continues with intense cosmic radiation passing through the thin Martian atmosphere, extreme temperature variations between minus, 100 de minus 120 degrees and 20 degrees, and the giant dust storms that cover the entire planet for months. And dust in space can be much more harmful than on Earth. For example, on the Moon, Dust has sharp edges and is highly reactive and corrosive. So it's not really something that you want to breathe. This means that we need to invent deep space habitations that will protect us and provide food and medicine. If you watch the Martian movie, this is pretty close to what we could do using protective greenhouses supplied with water from the ice poles. But even if we make the red planet completely self-sustainable and we bring nothing but ourselves, we'll still need to improve our landing skills. Today, NASA is able to land a one-ton vehicle on the surface of Mars. But for human exploration, we'll need to land at least 10 tons and with a much higher precision to avoid mountains, hills, and rocks. And while landing needs to be improved, Taking off needs to be invented. We managed to take off from the moon, but for Mars, the gravity is higher and the travel is much longer. 
Today, we only have one-way tickets, which might not be very appealing to travelers. But even, even if we know how to come back from Mars, so we will want to bring back a little Martian souvenir and use our advanced analysis techniques on Earth to study samples. This can sound very exciting, but also pretty scary. What if life on Mars is actually not compatible with life on Earth? It's a potential risk that we should consider. Returning samples could endanger the whole humanity, and it's actually hard to anticipate these threats. Life on Mars could be completely different from what we know about DNA-based life on Earth. It could be encoded on a completely different building block. So these new life samples could lead to the discovery of the fundamental form of life, but also to our own ending. And now let's assume that we know how to protect humans against this new form of life. We should also turn the issue the other way around. What if the human, the human footprint impacts Martian life? How can we explore without contaminating the red planet and run the risk of destroying everything in our way? For that question, I think it's, import it's important to remember the dreadful damage that was caused to colonized population in the past. I hope we learned from our history of cultural contacts on Earth to make informed choices about our future in space. Exploration and scientific innovation are in humans' nature. We are an unsatisfied species, and each technological achievement makes us want to go even further. But are we sure to know where we want to go? Yuval Noah Harari in Sapiens Epilogue said, we have advanced from canoes to galleys to steamships to space shuttles, but nobody knows where we're going. We are more powerful than ever before, but have very little idea what to do with all that power. Is there anything more dangerous than dissatisfied and irresponsible gods who don't know what they want? We are approaching the time when we'll, we'll be able to go to another planet. But does that mean that we will forget about our good old Earth as soon as we'll be able to escape global warming and nuclear proliferation? For what? Destroying a new planet? We should not consider Mars exploration as an excuse to give up on Earth. Space exploration has the power to bring outstanding outcomes in terms of commercial applications, education and inspiration to youth, scientific progress, philosophical outcomes. But this is under the condition that Mars exploration is considered as an insurance policy rather than a plan A. As the astronomer Carl Sagan said, we live in the middle of a shooting gallery with thousands of asteroids in our path that we haven't even discovered yet. So let's be at least a two-planet species as a backup plan. And indeed, if dinosaurs had a space program, they would certainly still be here today. Now, before you all go, I want to leave you with one last thought. Today, different countries are rushing to get there first. But we should also unite and start talking about the laws of this new land without leaving behind the ones who are not able to contribute to the technical part of this journey. Does it make sense to share the land based on technological contribution of countries on Earth, while almost none of the inhabitants have anything to do with the scientific advances of their country. Will the Martian humanity suffer from power shifts on Earth? If we take these questions seriously and early enough, Mars exploration could be considered as a new chance to reinvent our humanity. Now we have the power to make a new planet reflect who we are. But first, let's find out who we are on this planet Earth.
So then we can decide what we want for future humanity. And maybe this will save us from the dinosaur destiny. Thank you.